There was a small restaurant in the area I grew up in that was simply called Uncle John and Aunt Annie's. It was your typical small town restaurant that served home cooked meals and was run by a nice older couple. The two of them must have been in their late 30s or early 40s when they opened it. What made the place so special was not the food, but the drinks. The couple was brewing their own homemade booze. They had their own juices, beers, and even a variety of hard liquor. The one that was the most popular was called Aunt Annie's Ale. It was a sort of reddish fruit liquor, if I remember correctly. Everyone loved it, but there was never much of it available. Uncle John always said it took a long time to make it. It was supposedly really strong and tasted amazing. There were many people who came to the place, not so much to eat, but simply to drink the ale. I didn't think they ever sold any bottles of it, but instead served it exclusively during meals. Pretty clever strategy, I must say. I know that many people asked how it was made, but the couple never revealed anything about it or the ingredients used. There was even a story about some trouble one day, when someone tried to break into their place at night to find out how it was made. It was pretty crazy how popular the stuff was. Even long after the restaurant had closed and the couple had retired, people continued to go there and ask them about it. To this day, people continue to talk about Aunt Annie's Ale. While the place itself is almost completely forgotten, it is this one drink that everyone still knows about. It is exactly this ale that brought my best friend and me to my old hometown. We had put our savings together and started our own little restaurant. This had reminded me of the old place in my hometown. After I told my friend the story about the ale, we soon decided to get back and try to get the recipe of the stuff. If it was only half as good as everyone had made it out to be, we could make some serious money. After some research and getting in touch with some old friends, I found out that Uncle John had died almost a decade ago. Aunt Annie was still alive though. She must have been in her 70s by now. As soon as I had found out that she still lived in the same building that had housed their restaurant, we were on our way there. When we reached our destination, I recognized the old restaurant right away. There was even the old display. Most of the colors had faded, and some of the letters were gone, which now made the name an indistinguishable mess. As we left the car and made our way towards the building, I could see movement behind one of the windows on the second floor. Before we even reached the door, we were greeted by a tiny old lady. I remembered that back in the day, Aunt Annie had been an older but crafty, happy, and boisterous woman who was friendly to everyone. Seeing her now, it looked like she had shrunk to only half her size. The first word that came to my mind when I saw her was frail. For a moment, she only looked at us and didn't say anything. Then she opened her mouth. If you boys is looking for a place to have a meal, sorry to tell you, but this place here has been closed for a very long time. You'd best be off and try to find a place down in... She started to think, trying to remember a name. I spoke up right away. But Aunt Annie, it's me, Little Jerry. Don't you remember? She looked up and examined my face for some time, but then she started to smile. Oh, of course, little Jerry. How nice of you to come visit me. Come in, come in. My friend looked at me, brows raised, but I shushed him to be quiet. Of course, my name wasn't Jerry. There might have been a kid with that name in town, but I couldn't care less. The moment I saw Aunt Annie, I had already guessed that her state of mind might be as frail as her body that old age had taken the better of her. When she recognized me as little Jerry, I knew. She probably had no idea who Jerry was and just assumed that I was a relative of hers or her brain had conjured up an image of a random family member. It was kind of sad to see her like that, but what worried me the most was that she might have forgotten about the ale. She motioned us upstairs into her living room and told us to take a seat. Aunt Annie's place gave one the feeling of traveling back in time. The furniture must have been old even when I was a kid. The television set was a huge clunky piece that one would be lucky to find at a scrapyard these days. Even the smell of the place was old and moldy. Aunt Annie had been talking ever since we entered the place. I didn't understand half of what she was saying and didn't care about the rest, but she happily chirped on about how glad she was that someone came to visit her and whatever else. I simply nodded, said it was nice, and smiled a lot. That did the trick. I soon shifted the topic to the old restaurant and how things were different back then. She went on to tell us stories about herself, Uncle John, and the many people the two of them had known back in the day. 
To be honest, I have no idea if even half of it was true, but I could tell that her mind was all over the place. This went on for almost a half an hour before I even got the chance to ask for the ale. The moment it had left my lips, she looked up right at my face. It was as if she had suddenly snapped out of her drowsiness. It's all gone, she hissed at me. Every last drop. After a little break, she added, Stop the devil. What are you talking about, Aunt Annie? I asked her. I'm not here to get any of it. I just came to visit you, I assured, but she didn't react at all. She was too agitated and murmured to herself. I finally got up and put a hand on her shoulder. Aunt Annie? I asked. Oh, Jerry, I am sorry. What were we talking about? I sometimes forget. I nodded, smiling, and told her we were talking about the old times. She smiled and started talking again. I wondered what had caused this sudden episode. I assumed it was just the frustration of all the people who had come here constantly over the years. I decided I'd try a different approach. I told her that my friend and I were starting our own restaurant and that we'd like to get some tips or hints from her. After all, her place had been the talk of the town back in the day. There was nothing she could tell us. They simply prepared food and people came. People need to eat, right? She said, smiling. I sighed and cursed. I asked her if she had any recipes. She started to think hard, but said that nowadays she didn't cook much anymore. She often forgot ingredients or part of the process and ruined everything. By then, I was starting to get frustrated. I told her that the last time I was here, she had promised to hand me her old cooking book. That's when she lightened up a little. Oh, you're right. The book, the book. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. I forgot all about it. My mind is not as good as it used to be. Where did I put that again? Don't worry about it, I said and nodded. She motioned me to follow her along. She went into a little kitchen and then just stood there for what must have been minutes, thinking. Finally, she went to an old drawer and after some rummaging around for a bit, she got out a tiny old notebook. She simply smiled happily and handed it over to me. I flipped through it quickly, but all I found was recipes for various meals they served. There was no mention of any drinks. I started to get seriously mad at that point. Well, that is all nice, but what happened to Uncle John's notes? The ones about the drinks? Wasn't it his drinks that made your place as popular as it was? Her mood changed right away as the word drink came up. Again, she started to curse and murmur to herself. What is the matter, Aunt Annie? For a moment, she just stared at me open-eyed. Is it because they all wanted to get more of it? More what, dear? She asked. The episode was already over again. More of the ale, Aunt Annie? I confronted her. There's no more of that ungodly stuff. We'd stop making it. She broke off. Why? I asked. Because it was wrong, John. We can't anymore. I can't. Now she seemed to be lost again. Tears welled up from her eyes and ran down her cheeks. Why can't you? My friend had gotten up and entered the kitchen and looked at me with a sullen face. I didn't care. Because we used them. <laughs> she cried. Who are they? She started to cry heavily, shivered all over and almost collapsed, crashing against the kitchen counter. It was wrong, John. All of it. We can't ever go down there again. Down where? The basement, John. Everything down there is wrong. She went on and on, but I couldn't really make out the words anymore. Not that I cared. Aunt Annie was clinging to the kitchen counter. My friend looked at me in disgust. That's enough, man, he said and went over to the old lady. I simply shrugged. I have a look what I can find down there. With that, I simply left. Judge me all you want, but there was most likely no other way to find out about it. It took me a while to find the door that led to the basement. It was at the back of the house at the end of the old dining room. As I approached the door, I found it locked. No surprise, I thought. For a little while, I searched for the keys, but when I didn't find any, I went back to the door. Fuck it, I said to myself. After two heavy kicks, the door already bent inwards a little. Three more and the door swung open. I couldn't see a thing as I started down the stairs. Thankfully, I found a light switch that was still working. A lonely light bulb swung from the ceiling near the bottom of the stairs. I went down one step at a time, testing each stair before I put my weight on it. 
When I made it to the bottom, I looked around but didn't see anything of interest. I saw some old, empty shelves that must have once been filled with supplies. There was a tool here and a box there, but nothing else. It didn't take long to look through most of it. Then, I found yet another doorway which led to a second part of the basement. In this second room was an old self-made still that must have belonged to Uncle John. I smiled to myself and started to search the room. There was another shelf here, covered by an old blanket. I made my way there, but then I saw a little desk next to the still. It was hard to see since the light bulb in this room was broken and there was only a little bit of light coming through the doorway. I went to the desk and opened the drawers. The first one was filled with an assortment of tools and spare parts. The second one was the same. It was in the bottom one that I finally found what I had been looking for. A notebook and a couple of sheets of paper. The first thing I checked was the sheets, but it was just instructions about the still or drawings of its various parts. I put those down and opened the notebook. Bingo. The first page showed that I had found what I was looking for. There were the instructions for an herb liquor called Herbie Herbert. I went through the pages and there were a variety of other liquors and drinks, all with equally dumb names. Bobby's Berry Booze, Long Leg Larry's Liquor, it went on and on like that. I had to admit, some of these names were pretty funny and creative. When I came to the last page, I was confused. There were more than two dozen drinks in here, but no ale. What the hell? Why is it not in here? I cursed. I checked the single piece of paper again, then carefully went through the whole notebook again. Nothing. I threw the notebook to the ground and went back to the drawers. I had gotten a little idea if this really was their secret brew, then maybe they had hidden the recipe. It took me not even five minutes to find it. There was a little secret space at the bottom of one of the drawers. A stack of notes was hidden there. They were old, dirty, and clipped together. That must be it, I said to myself in triumph. There was no name on it, instead only some handwriting on the top page. The notes were pretty dirty and I couldn't read a thing with only the little amount of light in the room. I went back up from the basement and sat down at one of the old dining room tables. I unfolded the notes and soon noticed that the handwriting was different from that in the notebook. The notebook had probably been written or copied by Aunt Annie, but these here must be raw notes by Uncle John. For a moment I was confused about what exactly I was looking at. While the first page was covered in notes, the second one showed different drawings of glass jars, a whole number of them, all with individual notes. The third page held more instructions, and the last one listed all the ingredients. I read sugar, fruits, strawberries, and a couple of other things. That was it. There was no name on the pages, but the ingredients left no doubt that I had found what I had come here for. I started reading the notes. Creating the drink was a very long process because acquiring a so-called special ingredient took a long time and was very hard due to the limited amount available. I was intrigued and wondered what it was. As I read on, I found out how you had to prepare some of the ingredients and how to let them age till they were ready to be distilled. The special ingredient was mentioned a number of times, but it was never revealed what it was. Apparently, it was put into the glass jar and let ripen in there for a few weeks or even a month till it was ready. The process was mentioned in excruciating detail. As far as I understood, the most significant factor was time. The process itself wasn't too hard. I checked all the notes looking for a kind of secret message, but never found out what the special ingredient actually was. I remember the page with the glass jars. On here, it was explained how you add one ingredient after another to the jars how you mix them together with water and other liquids, and then it was explained what the different stages look like. At a certain point, it was mentioned that you had to add it to the rest. Then it took some more time to get ready. What the hell is it supposed to be? I cursed at the notes. Then I remembered the shelf next to the still that had been covered. I went down there right away and pulled the blanket away to see what was behind. The whole shelf was filled with jars. Most of them were empty, some had liquids in them, and there was two that contained something else. I stood there dumbfounded and fell on my ass. What the hell was that supposed to be? Was this some kind of sick joke? I looked on, but it was true. I had found the identity of the secret ingredient and almost vomited. Two of the jars, each, held a human fetus in it and had a name tag on them. 
I am no doctor, but I damn well know what a fetus looks like. I stumbled to my feet, but before I could even reach the next room, I vomited on the ground. Aunt Annie's Ale. Now the name made sense in a sick and twisted way. It was indeed made out of something that came out of her. I have no idea what must have driven them to create something like this. It made sense that the stuff was always extremely limited, and that at a certain point they just couldn't make it anymore. There was a point in time when Aunt Annie simply couldn't get pregnant anymore. Thinking about it made me vomit again. I started thinking. The town had been a devoted Christian community. Abortions or complications during birth were often condemned by the people, so they hadn't talked about it. Had the sadness of losing their children brought them to the point to keep them for whatever reason? I couldn't find any explanation for what could have pushed them to do this, though. Only imagining Aunt Annie, the nice, happy, boisterous lady from my childhood, and Uncle John making this drink out of their own... Ugh, I would have thrown up a third time, but my stomach was empty by now. I stumbled back up the stairs of the basement and into the kitchen. I took the damn notes and wanted to throw them away. At that moment, my friend came in and asked me where the hell I had been. You find anything? I looked at him and then hid the notes in my pockets. Nothing, I told him. He looked at me for a while. You alright, man? Yeah, just the damp air in that freaking basement. Must have been down there for an hour. I didn't say goodbye to Aunt Annie. I left the place right then. I honestly contemplated burning the whole damn place down with her inside when I had stepped outside. Our restaurant started out well, but soon declined. It is tough competing with the big fast food chains and subways these days. My friend told me we'd have to close the place down if nothing happens soon. I would nodded if nothing happens. I had found those crumpled up notes the other day. I should have thrown them away back then and there. In a small town, there is a really limited supply of special ingredient. In a city with a population numbering in the millions, though, you can get your hands on it quite easily. At least if you know where to look. I seriously should have burnt these damn notes back then. Because now, there's no turning back anymore.